Wow, Commander Legends, we have so many spoilers going on right now. Before we get into this video, vote. You don't have a lot of time left to do it. Make sure that you do it. It's a great way to make sure that your voice is heard. And if you do not do it, you do not get to complain. We're talking about Jewel Lotus. It's making a lot of movement in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of FOMO going on with this card. There's a lot of people freaking out about it. Oh my God, they've printed Black Lotus. There's people that say it's good. There's people that say it's amazing. There's people that say it's broken. There's people that say it's very medium. And there's some people that don't think it's great at all. Mostly Jeweled Lotus is a colossal card and right now people are overpaying for it and we have to get a video out to talk about it some other bigger youtubers are already doing this but just kind of want to be another voice in that crowd and um, put my opinion out there we're going to talk about some other cards as well in this episode of market the gathering the video starts right now Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. For a limited time only, if you join the Patreon at any level, you will receive a holographic Jake and Joel R. Magic logo sticker. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Are Magic. Today we are talking about Jeweled Lotus. We're talking about Admiral Beckett Brass and some other pirate cards and a couple other cards as well. But mostly we're talking about this new pseudo Black Lotus for Commanders. There's some crazy movement with this card going on on eBay. Some FOMO buyouts. The price is all over the place. I want to throw my hat in the ring and give you my opinion because I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing and I'm not freaking out about this card at all. If you like these videos where we stay up to date, on the most important things going on in the MTG market and in MTG finance, I encourage you to click like, click subscribe. We are trying to push to 10K. So if it's not too much trouble, please subscribe. It really helps out the channel as we continue to grow. We've said the things, let's go ahead and get into the meat. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is this new fancy card, Jeweled Lotus. It's a black Lotus, but it's specifically for your commander. Joel and I have reviewed this card. I'll go ahead and link that video now if you want to check it out. We give you our reaction to the card and just kind of discuss it together and it's a video solely about that card so if you're looking for more of that content about Jeweled Lotus I encourage you to check out that video but let's go ahead and talk about what's going on right now in completed listings with Jeweled Lotus we are on eBay uh, we're searching completed items that's what I just clicked on and it's just honestly really concerning we see a Jeweled Lotus extended foil commander legends this sold for $799.95 we saw one right here here, this sold for best offer was accepted on $1,200. We see here one sold for $999.99, one for $199.99. This is the non-foil. The reason we're talking about this is because I... I just, I think people need to know that this price is going to drop. The biggest difference between this card and the actual Black Lotus, other than the fact that Black Lotus is just supremely better as the mana can be used for anything, the biggest difference between this card and Black Lotus's price is scarcity. If you were to reprint Black Lotus straight up, I don't even think Black Lotus would be an $800 card because you would print it into the ground. You wouldn't have a problem finding it. It's not like an alpha and beta and unlimited where the player base was very small and it was a very uh, difficult card to acquire simply because of scarcity. We always talk about Imperial Recruiter and Grim Tutor and the reason we talk about those cards and we're also seeing three visits printed in this set as well, you can already see a big dip in price in three visits just based off of this reprint. So you have a lot of people that are undercutting the previous thing. This, this really just has to do with scarcity. So I feel bad for the people that are overpaying for these jeweled lotuses. Let's go ahead and get rid of completed listings and we're just gonna go uh, buy it now. Price plus shipping lowest first, jeweled lotus extended foil. And you can see right now that these extended foils are selling out and it has so much to do with FOMO. This set isn't even being opened yet. These are just pre-sales. You have people that think that this card, they're like, oh my God, this card is a thousand dollars. Black Lotus is, uh, is 7,000 even if it's like destroyed even if it's like a super beat copy is six to 7,000. I mean, I'm getting in at a fraction of the price. This card isn't even, it, is, it isn't even close to Black Lotus as far as power level goes. Sure, it will lead to like a turn one Urza. It will, if you pair this 
Swift, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Lotus Petal, Jeweled Lotus. You get all of these cards together, and yes, and a land, and sure, and a Dark Ritual, maybe you can get out an insane turn one in Commander, a eight or nine cost Commander. I'm sure that there's some way that you can do it with this card. However, those games are going to be few and far between where you have that exact pile of artifacts in your hand that are going to allow you to to do that. Am I underplaying the card? Do I think that the card isn't good? No, I think it's a freaking fantastic card. Ramping out your commander early is nothing to shake a stick at, but this price has everything to do with FOMO and nothing to do with the power level of the card. Everybody is comparing it to Black Lotus. So here we even have Foil Jeweled Lotus. This is no extended. Buy it now. Price plus shipping lowest first. And that is a $400 card as well. Now this set is a little bit bigger than normal Magic the Gathering sets and this card will be a little bit more difficult to acquire. However, to think that Commander Legends is not going to be opened in mass and there will not be tons of these going into circulation is just silly. And paying $400 dollars for a mythic foil right now when mythic foils appear quite frequently in collector products it just seems like a poor choice let the set be opened we see this with every single set i feel like i'm taking crazy pills every single time a set comes out everybody has all of this fomo they freak out i, I even have a, a video that i'll never be able to forget with Space Godzilla Death Corona, a very different card. It's an unplayable card compared to Jeweled Lotus, but there was so much FOMO around the fact that it was going to have this discontinued name. Everybody was going to freak out about it. It was going to be one of these hugely hyped cards. I think what we're going to see with Jeweled Lotus and some of the people that are paying these high prices, in a couple weeks, we're going to start to see buyer's remorse, and you're going to have people that are going to try to like cancel these orders on these sellers. It's just going to be a fiasco for both ends and a headache for both ends. So it's like you really do, if you are buying at this price, be ready to lock in because you don't want to make things awful for that seller. But do expect this price to go down from what we're actually looking at right now. I mean, this is a non-foil extended art jeweled lotus that's selling for $379, which let's compare it to Oko. Now we do have Oko that's like banned in everything, but this card is excellent in Legacy and it's even played in Vintage as well. And you can see it's $54 for the non-foil alternate art variant. It's a card that most likely will never be printed again. It's kind of like this big, huge reminder to Wizards of the Coast of how bad the power creep can be and how format warping a card can be. So it's one of those cards that you don't really expect to see a, a price jump in. And while we're here talking about Oko, I do want to move on from the Lotus because, you know, I think I've said what I need to say about the card. I think that uh, Jeweled Lotus is very good, but it's very niche. It's very specific. Some decks want it. Some decks don't want it. The power level is yet to be seen, but I do think it's not nearly as good as the hype and for somebody who's paying a thousand dollars for this card you know i just showed you uh completed listings for upwards of a thousand dollars for the foil extended art of that card expect to find that for a much cheaper price as this product is open in mass because right now the FOMO is driving this train and people are thinking oh my gosh this is my only chance to get it it's going to sell out everywhere there's it's there's no way that I'm going to be able to find it and it's just not true so while we're here and we're looking at Oko I think this is important to bring up there has been a huge spike in price in the foil of uh, alternate extended art Oko we have one here from France for $139.77 we have a Japanese one for $400 the current lowest price on eBay for a foil extended art Oko is $139.70 from France after that 401 for a Japanese version. But we do see one here for $259.99. We see one for $269.99 after that one that is, oh, this would be like the holy grail to have the miscut foil. Something to think about, this card compared to Jeweled Lotus is so much more oppressive. You can play it in more formats, albeit it is banned in a ton of stuff. But Oko is actually really good in Legacy. It's really good in vintage and it's excellent in commander as well it just absolutely destroys your opponent's mana rocks it turns them into elks for that plus one so you have a card here that is actually going up in price because it is eternally playable despite all of its bans and we're starting to see cards like this and the masterpieces from from battle for zindikar or the expeditions from battle for zindikar the masterpieces from kaladesh the invocations from amon cat all of those variants that are actually rare are starting 
starting to go up. I talked about that in the previous Market the Gathering video, but I wanted to talk about Oko because I've seen some serious movement. I bought one foil extended Oko for $80 in late 2018. Here's Oko Thief of Crowns uh, extended art foil on MTG stocks. You can see is $199.99. I just said I bought one for $80 in late 2018 and it went down to as low as $60 and now it has spiked up to 200 and I think it's just people see this as one of those cards that is um, very unlikely to be reprinted just because of its power level and the, the fact that many players would just be like why are you reprinting Oko this card isn't usable in anything that's affordable but great commander card some big movement in Oko Thief of Crowns. Next thing I want to talk about is Admiral Beckett Brass and Pirate pieces in general. The first one is the Admiral here you can see the foil has gone through an adjustment and you can see very recently the card has started to see a spike and this is just in response to Commander Legends there are so many good new pirate pieces that people are starting to spec pirates staples and just buying out these cards in general. The lowest price you see, uh, you see the foil price here is $28.60, but the only one we see over here on eBay is a foil for $45. Foil price here on TCG player says $18, but the listed median is $28.99. And we do see prices of the card for 23, 25, 28. Lightly played foil here for $19.99. So if you're looking to build pirates, this might be a good place to pick you up a copy of of the Admiral. Following the Admiral, I want to touch briefly on Glinthorn Buccaneers. Don't overpay for this card either. Uh, right now, this is a combo piece um, with Malcolm, new card from Commander Legends as well. And the foil is spiking. The regular version of the card is spiking. Again, there's so much speculation going on, so much FOMO. People are just buying up cards to buy up cards. So hold on, wait for the cards to get in hand, and don't overpay for a random rare from Core 2020. The combo is very strong that this card has with Malcolm on the field, and Malcolm does have partner, so it's very easy to turn Malcolm on as your commander and then all it takes is Glinthorn on the field and two or more opponents and there is a combo that is contingent on the number of cards that you can draw but as you eliminate opponents it decreases the amount of treasure tokens that you're able to create and so the combo does seem kind of fragile however it does represent very nice burst damage and will likely lead to a lot of opponents being eliminated. If you don't have a copy of Glinthorn Buccaneer, you can acquire one for around three to four dollars right now, but don't spec this card. Don't buy a bunch of these expecting it to shoot up in price. At this point, the ship has sailed. If you didn't buy into this card when it was like 50 cents or a dollar, you're just buying into hype and you never want to buy in after the window of hype. You wanted to be in before you wanted to get in before then you can make you can turn 50 cents into four dollars and if you have enough of those you can convert those cheap bulk rares into nice big real magic the gathering cards the next card i want to highlight in this video is scheming symmetry this is another card that is spiking because of commander legends it's one of the cards that i wanted to note because i think it's a very powerful card and now with opposition agent on the battlefield you are getting your opponent's search when you use scheming symmetry Symmetry. So you are searching for their card and you're getting your card. So EOT, you flash in the opposition agent or you just do it in response to one of their fetch lands or any time that they search a demonic tutor. And then on your turn, cast the scheming symmetry, take control of their search, do your search as well. There is a lot of gas here. I always was a fan of scheming symmetry because I'm a mill player and I just thought the card would really make waves in mill and it really hasn't. However, here we are with a one mana tutor spell scheming symmetry at sorcery speed and now there is a card that exists that's going to make this card very strong what will this do in constructed what will it do in edh how strong will opposition agent be time is yet to tell but the card is very 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 good it will lead to a lot of salty players when they crack their fetch land and now instead you are tutoring for them and they do not get a land i love this card I'm a fan of Scheming Symmetry. Let's go ahead and close the book on this one. All right, what do you think about Jeweled Lotus? What do you think about these cards? What do you think about the movement that's going on in these prices? It has so much to do with FOMO. And if you're a new player, if you are here and you were wondering, oh my gosh, is this uh, is this card good? Is it worth it? Is it worth this price right now? Is all of the movement going on with this card uh, worth it? 
Well, I don't think that it is, and surely right now the hype is out the roof. This is all anybody is thinking about. Go buy singles from Zendikar Rising. Go buy the expeditions that you're missing. If you're missing those expeditions, those are bottoming out. Double Masters, still, those singles are super duper low. Wait for the set to come out. As somebody who's been collecting for a long time, I'm telling you, wait, have patience, and you will find yourself a Jeweled Lotus for a good price. Am I guaranteeing that the foil extended version is going to drop dramatically from where it is. No, but I know that it will drop from where it is because right now people are buying out the pre-sales without really thinking it through clearly. And there will be a lot of buyer's remorse out there. There will be sellers who have to uh, honor returns, buyers who feel like, oh, you know, I bought this at the wrong time. I found a better price. Right now, pre-orders are all over the place and that can be a nightmare for a buyer and a seller. If you sell a card at a high price and then a couple weeks later, your seller is saying, hey, you know, I I don't really feel like I got the best price on this card. I found a better price. eBay will force you to honor that return. So it's kind of a difficult thing. If you're a buyer, you need to know when you lock in that price, you're buying that card at that price. Just take my advice. Don't buy in these overhyped prices right now. And if you are a seller and you're selling it overpriced because you know that it's going to bottom out, just expect buyers to maybe understand this and try to get their money back. You know, I hate that that practice happens, but it's just something that does happen. We've got Commander Legends Collector Booster Box is it worth it coming out soon? Make sure you're subscribed for that video. It's going to be coming out in the next couple days. I'm Jake from Jake and Joller Magic. We're pushing to 10K. Please subscribe and make sure that you vote. It's more important than these magic cards. I'm tapped out.